I'm Mari with Mari Sews, and thanks for hanging with me. So today is another Friday Sews where I get to tell you all about what I've been working on this week, what I have coming up, and then chat a little bit about life. Um, and it, there's actually been some interesting stuff going on lately. Friday Sews was created by Jen over at Today and Jen Sewing Room. And if you're not familiar with her, make sure that you check the description box right down there because I'll be sure to link to her. And you all, let's get to chatting. So grab your cup of coffee or tea and let's go. So let's start with what I've actually made this week. So I finally finished my Lottie hoodie. Now I am determined to use up the fabrics in my stash. And so the guiding fabric was, let me pick up the sleeve here was actually this one. Now this is an Arette fabric that I had picked up from Green Style Creations and I bought a yard of it wanting to make tights, these tights right over here. And actually, I love the fabric so much that I thought I'm gonna use up as much of these scraps as possible. And I had enough to fit two small little panels on the side of this hoodie. Now I chose the Sinclair Patterns Lottie hoodie because it was a bit more of a scrappier project, lots of color blocking, and so there were lots of options to actually use the fabric up. And then from the really tiny smaller bits, I made some straps. Straps? No, those aren't straps. Some, um, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I forgot what these things are called, but I basically used the same fabric to squeeze out some pull strings for my um, cowl neck. I did do the cowl neck version and not the hoodie. So you can see there. I'm going to be sharing all of the details about this Lottie hoodie that I put together um, on Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. But what was actually really interesting was that I ended up removing some, some actual fabric from my stash. So I used up the last of this dark purple arete fabric. So that's one yard gone. And then I also used up the entire yard and a half of this stuff. Well, actually, I didn't use it all up, but there were a lot of flaws that I ended up noticing on this scuba fabric that I had used. It's a double-sided scuba. On one side, it's pink, and on the other side, it's brown. And what I noticed was there were snags on this pink fabric throughout the entire length. So I had to be really careful with where I positioned my actual um, cow, cow neckline piece on the fabric. That paired with the fact that I made a mistake and had to cut it again meant that this entire, the entire yard and a half is gone, which really excites me. The other thing that I've been working on this week are um, tote bags. So I have been on the hunt for, well, just my perfect tote bag. And I think I'm pretty close there. I've been designing this one myself because it's something that I wanna be able to offer on my online shop. Um, actually, let me show you where I started. <laughs> so this was the first version. And actually, this is fabric that I pulled out of my stash as well. This is um, one of the Solarium outdoor fabrics that I picked up from Joann's a while back. But this was the first tote bag version that I had made. Um, I'm not exactly excited about the shape of it. I feel like it's a little longer than wide. And I think I'd prefer it. I prefer this shape better than this one, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then you can see that I did add a pocket here in the front. Keep in mind, this is just kind of a quick mock-up, so I didn't put any closures or anything, and I left this top raw. But this is where I started, and I think I'm finally at a point where I really like the shape of the bag, and um, yeah, I think I've got the outside planned. Now I have to start thinking about the inside lining. So this is the new version right here. So you can see it is longer than it is tall, and then there's also this pocket right here. And I changed the shape of the pocket a bit so that way it didn't come all the way across. 
So I'm really loving this. The one thing that is kind of, I don't know, I've got to put some thought into this and maybe you all can help me with is um, this pocket as it stands right now is really not functional. So I had a couple of different ideas. One idea I had was to kind of leave it like this, put a magnetic closure here. However, on the inside, put a pocket. So that way you can put something like your phone down in there and it would stay, right? And then the magnetic closure so you can't really see it. The other idea is, well, actually I have three ideas. So that's idea number one. The second idea was that I could actually do a bit of a quilting effect on this pocket. So I was thinking about sewing this corner down so that way it does make it a functional pocket with stuff that doesn't slide out. So I'd sew this down, but then I would just mimic the rest of that pattern on the top pocket piece. So that way it is functional. And then, and then I'm not even sure that I would need a magnetic closure because this would be out of a thicker leather. So it wouldn't really flop open like that. Okay, so that's number two. The third option that I was thinking about, and actually I feel like this would be the most, the, the more time consuming, resource consuming one, but probably the most fabulous one, perhaps. I was thinking about making this entire pocket a zipper pocket which means that I would probably have to cut another diagonal out under here so that way I can attach the zipper in on this side and then you can just zip it closed, which I think would actually be really cute. So those are the three different things that I've been kind of turning around in my head. Let me know what you think about those three options and if you lean towards one over the other. Again, the first one is to add a magnetic closure and then put pockets on the inside so that way you can just slip a phone or keys or something down in there without them getting lost. The second one is to do the quilting effect on the front pocket so that way it makes it an entirely functional pocket which probably is the easiest of all of the options. And then the third option would be to make this a zipper pocket in the front. This is what the back of my tote bag is looking like right now. Um, I mean, this is not a functional pocket. That's just the design to kind of mimic the look that is on the front here. Next up, I have to figure out how I want the inside. I know that I want lots of pockets on the inside. And then I also know that I want to have a zipper pocket as well. So I'm gonna be figuring that out at some point. When I'm done designing this thing, that'll be about three additional yards that I will have removed from my stash. So I'm off to a good start with my New Year's resolution of sewing down my stash, which is great. Now let's talk about what I have coming up. So there are two things on my mind that I wanna get started this week. One of them is a definite need to finish, and that's going to be the Green Style Creation Studio to Street um, pattern. So I'm going to put it right over here so that way you can take a look at that one. I, I do want to try it out and see how I like it. I'm also going to be pattern testing the extended size range for Sedona patterns. Now that is, <laughs> you all, one of the things that I told myself was that I was not going to be doing any pattern testing this year. Um, mostly because it really kind of, it takes up a lot of time. You're making multiple versions of a garment typically, um, which means that you're also wasting a lot of your fabric. It's a really kind of expensive and time consuming process. However, I really do like Tommy's patterns. Um, Tommy's the owner of Sedona Patterns. I like working with her. She was such a huge help when it came to Project Dress-A-Girl that I felt like 
you know what, this is, this is a good cause. Um, she's extending her size range. I want to test out some of her larger sizing. So I am going to be working on that this upcoming week. Now let's talk life. On a crazy, not so good note is, uh, man, before Christmas, so Christmas Eve, I had gotten my kid a hamster and I showed you all, you know, when I brought him home and set up his little overnight cage because the following day, Santa Claus was bringing him a much bigger cage that my son and I were going to be building. And you all, the hamster rights activists came for me. You are. It was it was kind of insane. I'm not going to lie. I haven't received so many so many like hate messages in a while. And what's really kind of nuts about it is that all of the comments were like, "You are so cruel to be keeping him in such a small cage. How dare you? That is cruel and inhumane and you all, I was the worst person alive, according to these people. And what they all failed to notice was the fact that at four different points in that video, I had mentioned that it was a temporary overnight solution. And then towards the end of the video, I even went on to say, I'm going to be connecting this cage to the bigger cage with tubes and blah, blah, blah. They didn't hear any of that. They didn't see any of that. They just saw me putting together that small little cage and they came for me. <laughs> I mean, you all, I can't tell you how many times I responded with, did you, did you actually watch the video? Because I mentioned that it was a temporary overnight solution and a lot of people ended up either deleting their comments or they, <laughs> they apologized. One person even mammed me, you know? <laughs> After I pointed out that it was a temporary solution, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. And then that's when it hit me. I probably have a bunch of like 12 year old human rights activists coming for me. Now, I mean, I'm happy that they're like, they're, they're taking up a cause, but can, can you at least pay more attention before you, you go in hard on someone? <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, let me see if you can see him. So there's more Pico in his new cage. It's kind of far away, but he's got one of those like multi-level cages. And at the top, there's like a little bedding area with little petting stuff. I actually didn't connect the smaller cage into the bigger one because the tubes that I got didn't quite fit together. So I have to figure out the tube situation. All of the cages, we have two smaller cages that can get connected into that to that one right over there. So, um, yeah, and they're all Katie brand. So I'm going to pick up a bunch of different tubes. I'm surely I can pick some up on Amazon and we can just kind of connect them all and create a really fun space for the hamster. But yeah, he's, he's doing really good. My kid loves taking care of the hamster every day. He'll come in and he'll scoop out the, you know, the little hamster litter in his potty. Did, did you know that hamsters could be potty trained? They can. It's pretty amazing, actually. So he scoops it out every day, and then he gives him more food, he refreshes his water, and then he gives him little treats. So sometimes it's like little carrots. Sometimes he'll give him apples. We make sure that there's no apple seeds, though, because I, I think those are really poisonous for them. All kinds of little treats, these little critter pops. And... Really, I mean, he just shoves it all into his, like, cheeks and takes it up into his bed and unloads it all in there. I don't I don't know when he actually eats it, but he does because he's getting big. <laughs> That's what I've been up to all week. If you didn't catch the last video where I talk about my um, New Year's goals and how I'm actually cataloging my fabrics, check out this video right over here. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.